stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have some people visiting for a board showcase. So, right, right away, huh? come on up and. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just right here. Do I just stand for where you're at? Wherever you like. Okay. So, I, did, I don't know if everyone knows, though, but our, we're showcasing our middle schools tonight. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is our great assistant principal, Erin Frank. She's been with us for three. Four, it's my fourth year. Fourth year here at the middle school. Yeah. And we'll let you take it from here. Okay. So good evening, everyone. My name is Erin Frank. I'm the assistant principal at the middle school. And I'm here tonight to tell you a little bit about a new program that we have started at the middle school this year called Tiger Recovery. So this is a program that I have dreamed about um, the creation of since I myself was a middle school teacher and along this year with a very supportive head principal and partnering with our online program, we've been able to pilot it and make it happen. So um, we piloted this program this year with our eighth grade students. And in a nutshell, um, any eighth grade student trimester one that did not pass English, math, or science was put into a Tiger Recovery class that was um, created online that specifically had the standards that were covered in that first trimester for the students to go back and master. So Rebecca Fuller, who is our online program coordinator, jumped at the idea of helping us out when we told her about the idea about this program. We were able to use our existing online platform, which is called Apex, which we have for the high school, for the middle schoolers. So within that high school platform, there is um, a part called foundations, which at the high school level might be considered remedial, but fits for middle school. So we were able to use that existing platform to create this class for students. Uh, Rebecca worked with our eighth grade English math and science teachers. And so they were able to actually go on. She taught them to go onto this program, go onto the foundations and pick the standards that were actually taught during trimester one. So I can just pass this around, but you can just see this is just a printout of the math foundations number one. So there's multiple units in there. There's decimals and fractions, all of those things. So the math teachers, eighth grade math teachers sat down and they were able to go through and say, okay, we worked on decimals trimester one. We worked on, you know, we worked on long division, all of these things. So they tailored it specifically to what the students missed during the trimester, not just like fluff work or go sit in this class and do some worksheets, but it was actually the things that they missed that we wanted them to master. Um, so, Communication for this program, communication with families was key. Uh, Charlie and I, at the end of last year, in the beginning of this year, sent letters to the eighth grade, incoming eighth grade families about the program, what it was, who would be in it, what it looked like, all of those things. And mid trimester one, any student in eighth grade that had a D or an F in any class got a letter just saying, hey, like this is where your student is right now. Just so you know, at the end of this try, if they're failing any of these classes, they'll be put in this class. And then at the end of the trimester, obviously we contacted those families and let them know that they'd be put in this Tiger Recovery class. Students are in Tiger Recovery for one period a day. So students are not taken out of any of their core classes. Most of those students are taken out of phi ed or encore or exploratory if they're not a music student. So that's the class that they missed. Um, so they, one period a day, but they can also work on it outside of school. So they have the capability of using that if they're motivated to do so, and some students really are, to, you know, to kind of get through it and be done with the course and go back to their regular schedule. Um, students have to, correct me if I'm wrong, but they have to have at least 70% mastery, correct? Um, on anything that they do within the program. So they can't just click, click, click through it or flip through anything. If they do something and it is not at 70%, they have to go back, do some more work, and then get it unlocked by their teacher to go back in and try it again. So we actually did have one of our eighth grade boys over the weekend, over a weekend, go knock, knock, knock on his teacher's door and say, will you please
please unlock the test for me because I'm ready to go back and I want to do it over the weekend. That actually did happen. Um, <laughs> once students are finished with all of the coursework and they have mastered it, then they would go back to their regular schedule. So they would go back to having FIED or whatever it is that they were missing. Um, we celebrate each student as they exit and kind of dorky like middle school needs to be. So we get super excited and call home and celebrate the students. Um, and we have seen a shift in academics, also in the attitude of our students who are doing it, as well as a lot of the students who aren't in it realizing, oh, okay, maybe it's will, not skill, not will, and now I need to make sure I'm getting all my stuff done and doing it well the first time. Um, I do have a handout that I'll leave with you guys, but a couple quotes from students. One student said, Tiger Recovery helped me to learn more and encouraged me to try harder. I won't be in it again next trimester because I'm passing all of my classes now. It really does push you to try harder. And that's actually the student who went to the teacher's house <laughs> who said that. Another student said, Tiger Recovery helped me to close the gaps on what I was struggling with. It helped me to learn the things I had not learned. So that's exciting when the kids are telling us that. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, this program is in its infancy. We are just starting it and we will tweak it and change it as we go um, to make it better and fix any problems that we see. But a few data points that we're already seeing, um, at the end of trimester one, we had 33 eighth graders who did not pass English, math, or science. So then they were put in that um, Tiger Recovery course. So we just finished trimester two on Thursday, and right now we have 24 students that were enrolled in Tiger Recovery. So that's good, after just once around. Um, another really exciting statistic is 45% of the students that were in that initial Tiger Recovery class passed all their classes trimester two. Hmm. So we have a couple of repeaters and a couple of newbies, but 45% of those kids did, did pass those classes and didn't have to do that. So that's exciting. Um, as we move forward, obviously we want to look at how is this going to impact our eighth graders going into ninth grade? That's a huge transition year. And that is where, as a middle school teacher, I was always oh, like, are we setting kids up for success at the high school when they go to a credit-based system? And then they pass it, you know, they don't pass a class and now maybe I'm not on track for graduation. So will this help our eighth graders transition better to ninth grade? And then four years down the road, will this have an impact on graduation rates? So those are all things that we are thinking about as we are trying to develop this and um, you know do what's best for kids. So we're super excited. That's just a little bit about it. Again, I have a handout and um, yeah, if you have any questions. I have a question. Yes. So when they so if they fail like math trimester one, then they're enrolled in it for trimester two, yep. but so then are they working on two like multiple math classes yes. in trimester two? So yep. they're picking up where they were and yes. learning the new things? Yes, so they still have their regular math class, yep, but then they're also doing Tiger Recovery Math. Thank you. And are they able to do the recovery at their own pace? Yes. So they can, they don't have to be in it the entire trimester. They, yes, they if they, if they finish, work really hard and be. Yep, if they finish, they go right back to their regular, their old schedule Perfect. whenever they finish, which is exciting for them, and then they get to tell their friends, and they're kind of like, yeah. fostering. And know? they're cool, right? Yeah. So. so who teaches it? Um, so it's facilitated by a couple of our eighth grade teachers. So we were able to shift a few things within the building schedule. So um, like Michelle Cunningham who's an eighth grade English teacher. She helps facilitate it. Mr. Bacher and I are in there quite often as well. So just depending on uh, which quarter or semester classes or trimester classes are going on, we have those teachers in there facilitating and helping those students and unlocking quizzes or making worksheets for them because they um, have study guides you can print out that they can use and so those kind of things. Any other questions? Well, if you well what's, what's really cool about this is, is you saw a need. You know, there was, there was a gap here. This is a, an unmet need. It was, it was clear that we needed to do something. And you came up with a strong solution for that. And, and it's exciting to see how far you've come already. And the potential is there to just continue you know, to, to grow and get better there. Do you see it expanding to the other grades? So we've talked about that um, within the foundation's curriculum, and you would probably know more than I would. I think there will come a point where it may not meet all of the needs. They do have a middle school curriculum, but it's expensive. You know, it's like ten grand a year. So if we can use the foundations, we you know we've talked about expanding to maybe seventh grade. Not sure if, sixth, if it's really appropriate for sixth grade if they're making a huge transition to the middle school. 
um, you know, but maybe after second trimester for seventh graders, you know, so just trying to see where we would go with that, but just starting with eighth grade this year, for sure to kind of figure it out. But it's yeah, so great that it gives the kids like the option to be responsible for it. You know, you messed right. up, now you can fix it. Yeah, yeah right. it's, I know I have a seventh grader and he is not having a great year. He's struggling <laughs> at school, hopefully. Sixth grade was great, seventh grade, I've always been told it's kind of a yes. wonky year, but it's hopefully it's true. Yeah. I hope that's yeah, it true. Is. You're not the oldest, you're not the youngest, you're just this hormonal yeah. in-between thing. And can I um, share yes. a little bit? Um, it was kind of neat too, organically, as this is growing and kind of figuring out where we can best support students, because that's really mm -hmm. your goal in that. I had a request um, from um, a teacher that is teaching in this, with students with IPs, and we took the trimester one curriculum, and now she's having her students use that, that have wanted to learn more about math and level more math and have more challenging math in that special ed room too mm -hmm. so that was a really yeah i don't even know if i had shared that mm -hmm. with you because no, she had just awesome. asked me for that and so we just set up a, a class just for that student and it's easy to do i mean you don't have to buy the curriculum and do right. all these extras and find an extra teacher this teacher can facilitate it quite easily by just using it mm -hmm. so I think I think it's just starting, yeah. And I think lots of really use interventions, yeah, yep. and sure. focus on that, yeah. I'm super proud too, like just to watch um, how enthusiastically Rebecca jumped on board and supported it. It was just an, mm -hmm. an incredible partnership um, to see the vision, you know, that Aaron carried through was really great. And then just to be in that room, teach. I mean, mm -hmm. we were teaching. I did, I was surprised how how well I caught on to eighth grade math. I was like, because <laughs> 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 you're like, I, I'm in there, and I'm like, I've got to. I gotta learn this right along with them so much. And, and, and I'm looking at the camera, how'd you do that? You know, and, and that, but that was the fun part of it is just pu putting ourselves at the level of the kids, learning it along, the, learning it along with them was a culture piece and it was logic instead of punitive. In a group of kids that are used to feeling a little bit of resentment towards school anyway because of whatever reason, um, no judgment. We just, we didn't care. We just got in and did it with them. And, to build those relationships with the kids is by far the most fun part. Like I would leave, I would leave smiling at the end of the day. In middle school, the end of the day is not usually a time that we're smiling. It's usually everybody's kind of phoning it in, getting getting their their acting up in, you know, 15 yeah. minutes before the bell rings. Right. We were having fun with them. So yeah, I was just sure. really proud of the the way that it should be. Yeah, it's been great. So it'll um, be interesting to see <clears> if <throat> they get in trouble in ninth grade yeah. if they'll ask for it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll be proactive on their own mm -hmm. because they mm -hmm. right, you know, have the good experience. And you'll be there, so they'll have a... Right. And it is a different way of learning, which I think for some of those students has been also very helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, it's they, they take notes, they're learning how to take notes on everything, and then they can use their notes within, you know, the assessments. And, you know, for some of them, those are also comments that they, you know, this is really helpful to me to slow down and you know, take it at my own pace so that I can learn it a little better. Where sometimes in the classroom we go fast because we have so much to cover and, you know, um, so it's just been, I think it's been good for them to have both of those things, so. Is this, is this something that could be adopted at the height? I mean, at different levels of that, I mean, it's not like it, it could be, right? Well, it is, that is what we use for credit recovery. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we are using <clears throat> the same thing in credit recovery, which is about taking those skills, mastery over that after failing the course. So it, it basically is. Yes. So they kind yeah. of okay. say, do I want to do this <laughs> if I fail a ninth grade or a 10th grade right. class? Right. So we're right. giving them okay. a little insight into their possible future. If they can change it now, that's our goal, yes. so that they don't yeah. have to do that. Yeah, I that's think it's super idea. important yes. to have that in eighth grade. Because we've historically always, it's always such a, tra a transition for them from Eighth grade to ninth grade and failure rates and all I that. Think nationally, We've I had think all it's those really statistics here at the board table and and to I mean I I mean it's gonna it's gonna make a difference. Yeah. I mean it will. Which it is already really is, exciting. You know, it's fun. It's it's mm -hmm. exciting to see. So well thank you, middle yes. school. I think we're blessed to have such strong leadership at the middle school. Yeah. It's such a unique developmental stage of our students and it's such an important building and we're thankful.
So thanks for coming here tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we'll move on. Um, let the record show that all board members are present, including Eric Minks, who's attending remotely. And thank you so much. There are no citizens' comments, and we'll move on to board member committee reports. Eric Minks, I don't know anything going on in. I have nothing to report. <laughs> we did go to Alligator World today. <laughs> Eric Schrammer. Uh Just finance committee right before this. All right, John. You have nothing to report. Chad. Um, finance and then agenda planning. Okay. Um, I also had agenda planning and. Um, Ben and I spent uh, the day at the Capitol, the C day at the Capitol, and um, I'm going to just wait until he talks more about that and then I'll uh, jump in there to um, add a little bit more to that. Deb? Uh, just finance. All right, and Mrs. Bush? Uh, I did not have any committee meetings, but I did want to share that uh, at the uh, primary and intermediate school, we had, they just finished the readathon. And this year we had the most minutes read and the most money raised and the most students participate ever. So I just thought that that was something really fun to share with, you know, especially reading being kind of, you know, important. Well, important, <laughs> but like also, you know, after the pandemic, we've had some low, you know, everyone has had lower numbers. So it's just really fun to see it. all the kids reading in their book report. Yeah, it's very fun. So, thank you. Yeah. And student council report. Well, I know that in some activities recently, there's been some success in, at the state wrestling tournament. Tyler Wells was a champion, and Parker Adkins got fifth. And I know at the robotics, a robotics tournament lately, the four horsemen team received an award at that one. Um, in student council, we've been focusing on Women's History Month, so we're going to do a crossword type activity throughout the school that's focused on different women in women's history and what they've achieved. And then tomorrow is the start, other than, well I guess te technically today was the start of the third trimester, but tomorrow is the start of the actual classes So, at the high school. I believe the district in general. So. All right, thank you. Third trimester already. Yeah. 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 It's going fast. <laughs> um, superintendent report. <laughs> uh, thanks, Winnie, for acknowledging our student successes. It is pretty incredible, all of this, the successes and just the work of our uh, student athletes and students in activities. Um, and they represent us on the, the biggest stages in the state of Minnesota. Um, I know that with the robotics folks that we have uh, groups also going on to the nationals and maybe even the worlds. So the, that's exciting. I know Don worked at that tournament, what, all last weekend? Yeah. Yeah, so thank you for that. Uh, yeah, we were at the Capitol today. Uh, I, I think that the, I'm going to have to go to the Capitol more than I typically do. There are just so many different uh, bills that are floating around right now. And we had an opportunity to talk to quite a few different legislators today. We had some of our friends from a few other similar districts in central Minnesota with us. And uh, because we spoke mostly, well, all to, to Republicans, which uh, all, pretty much all of greater Minnesota, with some exceptions, are legislated by Republicans, right? And as you know, the Republicans are not in the majority. So it's it's a, the people that represent us, uh, I feel like they hear us and understand what the issues are and are genuinely concerned. But I do, it's clear that they feel uh, a bit of helplessness and that they're not in the majority. Um, I think, well, I'm positive that we're going to have to spend more of our efforts trying to speak to some of the Democrats and find key Democrats to uh, share some of our concerns with. Uh, we're thankful and excited about some of the, the dollars for um, uh, being discussed for revenue, 
but there are new bills with mandates that would would literally you know could shut some schools down i mean some of these things that are out there are would be impossible to do there was a bill on class size that was heard today um you know if, if you know we we all want low class sizes but if we were mandated on what class sizes would would be for one that would take away local more local control from local school boards uh but two it would require us to hire several new teachers which would be great but you know where are we going to find a million dollars to do that and in addition where would we find the six to ten to fifteen new classrooms that we would need um and to put those classes in so you know those are there's just uh, quite a few bills out there that are high highly concerned concerning for us and most of those bills quite honestly do take away local control from from school boards um so you know i think more than ever we are the board and myself and all of us are going to need to be paying more attention and be more engaged uh, in communicating with legislators and try and strategically find ways to connect with some key democrats as we move forward question are we not i mean i know that our leaders are republican are we not allowed to schedule like we can't get meetings scheduled with democrats i know it's just see what's setting them up and that was yeah. not something they could do but well i would say that we're going to have to try harder than we have probably in the past um and now next week when i'm up there or down there with masa uh, there will be some meetings with uh, the chair of the F. And the F. What did I say? Superintendent. Superintendent's guy. I just didn't know yeah. it was. Oh, guy. yeah. Yeah. MSA so is a. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be meeting with uh, the chair of the, the Ed Finance Committee and the chair of the Ed Policy Committee. Uh, so that will give us, you know, some more ears to speak to. So, you know, we'll just kind of keep our eyes and ears open as we're trying to develop our budget for next school year there are just so many unknowns and you know we met in finance prior to this trying to put parameters and you know when you build a, a budget it's based upon your best educated guess on all the information that you have and we're plugging these numbers in uh full well knowing that they're not accurate because they're they're going to change like from the number of students student enrollment to percent from the state in terms of per pupil unit mm -hmm. to any cross subsidy or any other line item uh, revenue that comes out on, and then any additional expenditures that, that are mandated you know those are all of the unknowns so you know we're going to be talking budget every single meeting all the way through june probably into july and you know as things change i just want the board to to just kind of know that we're going to have to be able to pivot and modify and adjust as new information comes our way. And that's okay for us to do that. We just want to get it right. Right. Uh, hiring the new high school principal is a big deal. And, you know, that's something that, uh, See how I changed the subject there? No, it was a jump. There was, I didn't see the segue. There was no segue. I just went right into a new topic. I'm done, done talking about legislation. Uh, now we're talking about hiring a high school principal. It's like I mentioned, it's a big deal. I had an opportunity to meet with all of the high, high school uh, team members. It might have been yesterday. And uh, just shared with them my thoughts in terms of the um, interview process. Uh, my intent is to be highly inclusive to, um, and this is where I might need Winnie and some other, I'm, I'm gonna need help with some of this because I, I wanna get a large group of students to be part of the interview process. Um, I, and uh, you know, I'd like to have anywhere between 10 and 20 staff members be involved and as well as parents um you know some admin 
and it, you know business folks to just have a nice cross section of stakeholders. Um, it's going to be uh, quite an undertaking, uh, and will have to be highly organized because this will all happen on a school day when school is in session. So still operating the high school with a thousand students when we're trying to have as many teachers as possible and staff members be involved in interviews. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking it will consist of uh, tours with students where there'll be lots of engagement, see how the, the staff member or the candidate interacts with their high school students. Uh, I'll likely have the candidates come ready to do a presentation on a topic, and that will be a group. And then we'll probably have a couple uh, traditional Q and A uh, sessions as well. So uh, we're going to put them through a pretty rigorous interview process with lots of people having input. Um, it's uh, been listed, advertised. Um, I don't know what we're going to get for candidates, and uh, we'll go go through a process to screen them and. I don't know if how many we'll bring in. I would my hope would be at least four, uh, up to eight, depending on how many quality candidates are out there that we deem appropriate to interview. So I'll end my remarks unless you have any other questions for me. Um, I do have uh, one other thing. I um, came across a news blip um, that um, Region 1 is um, on March 11th inducting someone into the Wrestling Hall of Fame. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> how did you find that? I just want to read this to you. Oh. Um, <laughs> ben Barton finished with 145 career wins. Um, and had third and fourth place finishes at Second, the eight third. Weeks. That was okay, well, it says third. He represented Team USA in trip abroad and wrestled in college at Division I University of Northern Iowa, where he earned three NCAA bursts and had a top 10 finish in 1998. Had 85 career college wins, then was head coach at Osseo for four years. A longtime school administrator, he's currently superintendent at Princeton, Minnesota. Oh. So congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now you know what I'm doing Saturday night. <laughs> I'll be in Rochester. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and thank you. Very good. Yeah, congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. So, all right. We will move on from that then to um, approving the agenda. I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Uh, motion made by Melissa, second by Chad. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <clears throat> motion carries. Uh, we will act, discuss and act on previous board meeting minutes from um, 221, both the meeting and the closed meeting minutes. I will entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Motion made by Deb. Is there a second? Second. Second by Don. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We'll move on to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Motion made by Eric Strandberg. Is there a second? No second. Second by Chad. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same sign. Motion carries. Uh, we'll move on to the information section of our meeting and um, the pre-sale report. All right, looks like we have Jody on. Hey, Jody. Hello, how are you? We are good. We, it looks like we let you in right when you're on. <laughs> well, I, I was just waiting with my camera off, listening to a, wow. the, uh, what was it, Alligator World and then your Hall of Fame. <laughs> been interesting so far great yeah. so now we're going to talk about some riveting pre-sale report numbers i know i can't compete with you guys 
<laughs> well, I was going to sit on the beach and do this, but I thought everyone would be really upset if I did that. So. <laughs> that is true. Okay. Do you have the pre-sale report in front of you? Do you want me to just kind of start stepping through or do you want me to share my screen? What's the best way for us to they go all through have it? it. They all Perfect. Have it. All right. All right. Well, I will start with just highlighting a few things on each of the pages. So this is the $3 million general obligation facilities maintenance bond issue, financing deferred maintenance projects that will be included in your 10-year plan to be submitted to the Commissioner of Education for approval. So they, they approved your plan last summer. You submit that annually, as you know, by July 31st. And so you'll just submit revised documents to them to include the projects that you'll finance with this bond issue. And as shown in the authority section there, the debt service payments will be paid from property tax levies and state aid that you already receive as part of your LTFM program, long-term facilities maintenance program. So you will not have an additional tax impact associated with this bond issue. And the term of the bonds is just shy of 11 years, so 10 years and nine months. And um, we will have a call date on these bonds. So if interest rates are nice and low by 2031, we'll be talking to Michelle about refinancing those because she will stay around to see that through. <laughs> and then- uh, like a ways out there, doesn't it? <laughs> Um, and then at the bottom there, the state credit enhancement program, there's language in the resolution tonight um, to uh, authorize you to participate in that program. There's no cost to participate in that program, but the state then does guarantee the payment of your debt should you not be able to make a payment. And as you flip to page two, then the um, rating that you receive from Moody's is a nice high AA1. So it's based upon the state's credit rating, which is currently a AAA, the highest rate that you can get from Moody's. And they just uh, assign the credit enhanced rating at one notch below that, which is a AA1. Your underlying rating is a AA3. We will go through the rating process again. So Ben and Michelle will be happy about doing that. And, um, and hopefully they'll affirm that rating. That is a nice high rating. There's not very many school districts in the state that have ratings higher than that. Um, in the middle of the page there, method of sale placement, we will solicit competitive bids for your bonds, just like we always do. Um, premium pricing is also a section included on that page because we do, we expect to see a premium bid and we'll show you that on the financial schedules that are attached. We do have some exciting news about a refunding opportunity, not on the horizon immediately, but that we've been monitoring for next fall. So your 2014A bonds, so your big school building bonds that you issued back at that point in time, have a call date of February 1st of 2024. So we can close on a refunding or refinancing of those bonds um, within 90 days of that call date. So we've been monitoring these bonds for quite a while. We do send Michelle and Ben reports summarizing and providing all the details about your refunding opportunities twice a year, but this is one that we've been watching for quite some time. Um, based upon the most recent report that we sent to Michelle and Ben, we were estimating savings of about $2 million. So this is a big one. This is a big opportunity and uh, rates have gone up a little bit since then. So if we sold right now, we wouldn't capture quite that much, but uh, rates have been pretty volatile and hopefully by next fall, they'll settle back down a little bit and we'll be able to capture quite a bit of savings for your taxpayers. Um, it's similar to a home mortgage, but you don't get to keep any savings for your budget. You do have to pass those savings on to your taxpayers in the form of reduced debt service tax levies. So you will be hearing from us. We'll continue to provide updates to Michelle and Ben as we get closer to that date, but we do expect to be um, presenting you with that opportunity next fall. Uh, the next page includes some regulatory um, requirements and um, information. Page four, we highlight the other service providers that we're working with. So your bond attorney, Dor Dorsey and Whitney, provided the resolution that you'll be considering later as an action item. There's also a notice that goes in the, in the newspaper. We'll be working with Bond Trust Services as the paying agent, and then Moody's is your rating agency, as mentioned earlier. Page five is the timing um, and kind of next steps in the process. So tonight presenting the pre-sale report and having you authorize the sale of the bonds. We'll be preparing the official statement and then having a due diligence call to go through that with Michelle and Ben. The uh, 
conference call with the rating agency that I mentioned. We'll distribute the official statement and then take bids and present those to your to you at your April 18th board meeting. And that just allows time for MDE to complete their review process and provide the letter that we need to get from them authorizing the sale of bonds, authorizing the issuance of bonds. And then we expect to close on May 11th. The um, attachments to the report start on page six. And that first attachment is our sources and uses schedule. So you can see in that sources section that we do expect to receive a pretty substantial premium, which you can use toward project costs. So as you um, go down that column, then the initial deposit to the construction fund, we think will be about $3.1 million. And that's what you'd have available for uh, projects right off the start. Page seven is the detailed principal and interest payment schedule. And you can see within the yield statistics there, the true interest cost rate or the TIC is what we award the sale based on. We're currently estimating a 3.63%. And then finally, page eight is a detailed schedule of your um, facilities maintenance bond. Um, that first section there shows the levy pay year, the fiscal year, um, the components that go into the calculation of your long-term facilities maintenance revenue. So it's based upon your adjusted pupil units and your building age and a maximum of 380 per pupil. So that next section over then shows the calculation of your total LTFM, re LTFM revenue. You do get quite a bit of your revenue from the state in this program, which is nice. And then the local tax levy is shown. In the middle section, you do have an existing facilities maintenance bond outstanding. You have four more principal payments due on that. So we have set up this proposed bond or the new bond that you'd be issuing in that next section to wrap around that existing schedule. So the principal payments on the new bonds would start once you've paid off your old bonds in four years. And then finally, the final column off to the right shows the general fund revenue remaining from that $380 per pupil to spend on other projects. So you commit a portion of it to debt service payments. And then while your existing bonds are outstanding, you'll still have about $600,000 roughly each year for other projects. And when the new bonds um, start, then you will have about $800,000 left and then ultimately would go back to the $1.3 million of LTFM revenue if you don't issue any additional bonds for projects. But this is a nice option for you to be able to address some of those larger projects, get the money up front, and then uh, make the payments back with the money that you receive as part of this program. So that's all I have. That was quite riveting, I could tell, right, Ben? Super riveting. Super riveting. <laughs> And I can stay on um, in case there's any questions on the resolution, if you'd like me to do that later in the agenda. Anybody have any questions on the resolution? No, I don't. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <clears throat> no. I don't think it's necessary. There's no questions, so you can feel free to, to leave if you want. But if you want to stay, you can stay. <laughs> totally up to you guys. There's probably not any more alligator talk. <laughs> Probably. All right. Pretty boring. Okay. Well, Michelle knows how to reach me. If anything comes up, I'm available. So just let me know, but I'll sign off for now and we will see you um, when we have the results from the sale. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, you guys. Have a good night. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Then um, a public engagement update. You want me? <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> uh, well, we met. I don't know. Okay. What are we doing? <laughs> All right. Here, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, yeah. I'll start. You fill in the gaps. Okay. We pulled our public engagement group together. Uh, we, I thought we had a very productive meeting. We reviewed some of the things we've done in the past. We created kind of our meeting protocol and, and uh, to guide some of our work, we started working on an action plan with some goals and some strategies that we will consider moving forward to accomplish those goals. We created a, a draft, a working document that we can all contribute to and collaborate on electronically. 
and that's kind of where we're at right now i have been more inclusive of that group to send them some documents that we work on are working on internally so that they see you know some things that we're we do already as our normal work as a school district that that is public engagement but i may in the past not have passed that on to make that connection to our board like for example our community at booklet coming out we will have eight pages of inserts uh, on school district kinds of items um, certainly the tiger times is something uh, uh, that we i send you every time that goes out uh, we have the uh, career academies book that we're creating that i sent to the public engagement group to have an opportunity to get feedback on as well which i think that will be a a major key communication that we'll use for the next several several years um, and we are in the draft stages of our mailer that would be front and back that would go out to every household in the community as well and once we get that more flushed out uh, we will send that to the public engagement committee to give feedback on that. We also talked about engagement, the board's engagement with like the staff and maybe staff recognition of some kind of through the from the board to be more engaged with the staff or the recognition or some other way. And so if you have ideas about that, I think we would also um, as a committee welcome those ideas because that was I think a piece that we haven't talked about mm -hmm. before um, so that that is a positive message from us from them to our community mm -hmm. and you know generally in the spring we will do some kind of a cookout piece and I'll invite board members to participate in um, so we'll try and get the dates for that set up earlier so that if, if it works for you to plan where there's a day or part of it, you know, when I say a day, I'm talking maybe an hour where you can kind of help and cook, serve, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we and, and we have dates on the calendar that we will meet, I think, every other month. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Opposite of policy. Yes. So that's our update. And we're setting a schedule for each of you to uh, bring a lawn chair and put it out on the street <laughs> with a sign. With a sign. That's what we That was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke. That will be Eric Mink's first assignment when he returns. Yeah. So he could probably just sit on the beach, and right. right, Eric? Right. Get the table set up. And hey, Eric. That's Eric my Mink. penance for uh, missing a month of um, all the snow. <laughs> of snowstorms. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Eric Minks came to the coffee and conversation with the superintendent, and we had a huge room full of people. <laughs> there was nobody. Oh yeah, that's what I did since our last meeting, coffee and conversation. <laughs> there we go. All right. We'll move on to the action um, portion of the meeting and 11A, we will um, move to accept the revised budget. Any more said on that before? Well, I don't know, Michelle, you were gonna, so, were you gonna say something? Um, I'm not going to go through the whole revised budget. We we have talked about it multiple times. Uh, the first document is the full budget, all funds, and our current fund balances. Um, and then each of the areas, uh, we approved capital and LTFM separately. Um, staff development and QCOMP were tweaked, so basically the program itself is the same as what the original was. And uh, we have talked about the unassigned area. That did change. We added $400,000 to revenue and $400,000 to expenses. And the reason we did that is the change at Rum River 
we are going to be using 400,000 in tuition dollars. So we're going to take our federal money and we're going to use that for tuition. So that's actually re that's revenue before um, Rum River kept those, kept that dollars and they spent it on the staff that we are responsible for. Well, they're sending us in effect a $400,000 bill for staff. Okay, so it, it's a wash. It's mm -hmm. a zero sum, sum game with the idea that in another year, we will make more, we will still be spending our $400,000 on tuition, but our staff that we have now added to our budget will start generating 55% off of their wages. So this summer, after we, we get this all in, uh, they'll run us, you know, our first initial 23-24 revenue for state special ed. Um, I don't want to get too excited. I, I do have a number in mind, but I'm also cognizant of the fact that our tuition bills could go up and could eat up anything we're getting in that regard. So that that's what the change, the only change um, we had from the last time we talked to now. There's also COVID-19 summary in here um, that you can look at and see what we have put to one-time money and if you want to call and have a conversation about that, feel free. Um, there has been lots of different pots of money uh, through this COVID-19. Uh, many of them are sunsetting and we will have one more year where we'll, we will have some money, but after that year, all of the one-time money is gone. We will be gone. So, um, otherwise, um, I suppose we can entertain a motion to All approve right. our new budget. I will entertain a motion. Um, so, motion made by Chad. Is there a second? Second. Second by Eric Strandberg. Is there any further discussion? All right, we will vote by roll call starting with Eric Minks. Yes. Yes. Don? Yes. Yes. Chad, yes. Two yes. 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 Um, mm -hmm. Motion carries. Now we move on to the resolution um, for the general um, obligation facilities maintenance bond. Is there entertain a motion to read that and authorize this bond? Uh, yeah, like I'll move to accept the resolution related to the three million dollar general obligation facilities maintenance bond series 20, 20, 2023 a state an official intent to proceed in <coughs> authorizing the uh, issuance sale thereof providing the credit enhancement uh, with respect to thereof as presented okay motion made by chan is there a second i'll second second by melissa is there any further discussion do we have to vote by roll call for this one? Mm -hmm. yeah, All right, right. we will vote by roll call. This time we'll start with Melissa. Yes. Dan? Yes. Sue? Yes. 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 Eric Strandberg, Eric Mink. Yes. A motion carries. 11C is to accept the board goals for the 2023 as presented. Is there a motion to accept the board goals? So moved. Motion made by Eric Strandberg. Is there a second? Second. Second by Don. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposing aye. Motion carries. Um, budgeted adjustments for the 2223 <clears throat> resolution. Um, we do this resolution every year. Um, there's someone willing to make the motion. I'll do it. Um, I don't know if you say the motion and then read it. Okay. So I have a motion to direct the administration to consider the discontinuance of programs or positions as required to reduce expenditures and or as a result of the reduction in enrollment and to make recommendations to the school board for the discontinuance of positions at subsequent meeting of the school board. Motion made by Melissa. Is there a second? Okay. Second by Chad. Is there any discussion? Just a, a couple comments. Uh, yes, this is boilerplate. This is something that every board does uh, at this time of the year, and this board has done it every year. Um, 
some years we have to make reductions and some years we don't. Uh, this is a year, as I've indicated um, in communications, that uh, we are having some preliminary plannings to where we feel we need to reduce our expenditures by about a million dollars. Uh, again, there's lots of unknowns that that are out there that we're going to learn more each each day or week or month for the next several months that we'll be able to tweak our budget. But uh, we are in some preliminary plannings of meeting with uh, principals and directors to find efficiencies in our budget. And uh, I'll continue to keep the board and our team members and our community updated on our progress with that. Um, there's a motion and a second. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed say sign. Motion carried. The high school student and services parking lot, we move to accept the bid from Omen Contracting for the high school and services parking lot. I entertain a motion to accept that bid. So moved. Motion made by Deb. Is there a second? Chad? No. Uh, second by Chad. Is there any discussion? Do we also have to do roll call on this one? No. Yes. Okay. Um, we'll vote by roll call starting with Sue. Yes. Chad? Yes. 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 Eric Mace? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Yes. Motion carries. There are no additions to the agenda. There are there must be a future meeting coming here the end of March, right? Yeah, just right. <laughs> um, oh, boy. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, and um, I will entertain a motion to close the meeting uh, to discuss no negotiation strategies. So moved. Motion made by John. Is there a second? A second. By Melissa. All in favor say aye. Aye. Close same sign. We are now in closed session. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, this is a carryover from last year.